you know, I think I'm going to reincarnate to Earth. I'm going to go back again, uh, which takes us about four years, even though time does not exist. But it's about a four year process where you're planning, you know, your gender, what century you want to come into because there really is no time so you can even come into the future you can go into the past you can come whenever you want to to a planet like earth and there are a few other realities like earth but there's not that many you are correct and so we know there's going to be contrast and we know what we want to work on we take parts of our soul that can help us parts of our soul that need healing and parts that want to have fun and pleasure and all of that deliciousness on this beautiful gorgeous planet Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so excited about the guest. It's the girlfriend that I hadn't met yet. And now we're fast friends after five minutes. Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And if you'd like to keep abreast of what's happening on the planet, but it seems a little overwhelming, you might want to sign up for our Friday morning email newsletter. The link is in the description box down below. Every Friday morning, we send out a very short, very informative, but fun email newsletter highlighting the things that we think are important going on around the planet. It's super easy to sign up. It's free. I think you're going to love it. The link is in the description box down below. And now I'd like to welcome in my dream guest, Marie Manucheri. Marie, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, Kimberly, and congratulations on your new channel. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm thrilled to have you today because I have so much I want to talk about. Psychic medium, background in the medical profession, kind of had some wild spiritual things happen in the hospital. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you walked into this life you're at now, and then let's talk a little bit about what's going on with humans on the planet after that. Sounds very exciting. Well, as you know, um, I was an oncology nurse. So I was raised very holistically and very spiritually. My parents left the Catholic Church when we were really quite young. Uh, I'm the oldest of five. So I think I was like six when my parents left the church. They were devout Catholics, Roman Catholics. And my youngest brother had been quite ill for about a year and a half. We're all a year apart. I mean, you know, like because there's no birth control back in the day, you know, now Catholics do what they want, at least I think most practicing Catholics do. But my parents were devout. And my brother had been in and out of the hospital for about a year and a half with um, viral spinal meningitis. And he almost died multiple times. And so my parents went to their priest to get permission for my mother to take birth control pill because they couldn't have any more children. They said, we're exhausted, we're worn, worn out, and we have this very sick baby. He did survive, um, and so he's fine, but he had even exploratory surgeries. It was just very complicated. And of course, the church excommunicated my mother. <laughs> Um, not my dad, but my mom. And then my dad left the church too, because it was their rule. You know, it's their rule, of course. And so after my mother stopped being angry at God for a while, um, she started to fill our house with books on spirituality. So I, I've read many, many, many spiritual books from an early age. So I always believed in intuition and psychic ability and you know, masters that walk upon the earth. And I, I don't know what I really thought about reincarnation. And for some reason, I never studied energy medicine, which is really where I popped into. And even though my family of origin did not want me to go to traditional nursing school, um, they wanted me to go to naturopathic university um, and study herbs, which every member of my family has their own pharmacy of herbs and vitamins and always have. <laughs> you know, we're just like, you know, self-proclaimed experts, you could say. <laughs> but um, I just fell in love with studying, um, you know, prerequisite nursing courses. Uh, and I went to the nursing school, loved every minute of it, enjoyed every minute of it. I'm sure I would have loved naturopathic school as well, but I don't think I was meant to stay in modern medicine or any even allopathic type of medicine for long. Um, and so I ended up eventually on the oncology floor of a Seattle area hospital. And I began to have extraordinary experiences. 
I began to actually, I'm a highly clairvoyant, so I can see into the multisensory world. I began to see into, into my patients' bodies and their organs started to talk to me. And I wasn't really shocked or surprised because I kind of had been somewhat prepared. I didn't think that it was unusual or weird. And of course we were giving very strong toxic medication to our patients because they all had cancer. So their bodies were talking to me up about what was going on. And I eventually went to my supervisor, not because I was scared about what was happening to me, but I was a charge nurse most days and it was distracting. And I mean, the bodies were just getting louder and louder and louder. And I was afraid I wouldn't respond appropriately, that I wouldn't go get a crash cart, which was the charge nurse's job, and help call a code if someone were to, you know, code on the floor. And I also had a personal rule that nobody coded under my watch, um, that I would either help them get their code status changed or we would transfer them to a critical care unit. I didn't want, I just thought it was so harsh on the body and that people were already incredibly ill. So when I went to my supervisor, I thought for sure she was going to suspend me and order a psyche valve because that's what I would have done if I were her. And I really liked her anyway. She, I just was very drawn to her. And she said to me that she thought I was seeing energy and I needed to start laying my hands on our patients. And I was really shocked by what she said. And when I kind of, it kind of put me in the present moment because I was pretty nervous to tell her, although I felt compelled to do so. Obviously my spirit guides wanted me to tell her because she actually encouraged me to learn what I ultimately um, still do professionally which is to help people heal their bodies. And uh, so I, I got very present and I saw behind her this beautiful fountain and these gore this gorgeous picture of an angel, which I'd never noticed before in her office. Oh, and interesting. I'd there, right? And I'd been there many times because I would be complaining about, okay, they're not on chemo anymore. Can we give them probiotics? Can we, you know, because um, the doctors didn't like my suggestions. So I would go and ask, you know, the supervisor, everybody was very kind. I loved where I worked and everyone was devoted to the healing of these individuals. So I started laying hands on patients. And the very first one that I did, I shut the door really tight behind me because I had no idea what I was going to do. Although I've touched you know, who, who knows how many people with my hands in a stethoscope and, you know, checking their pulse and listening to their lungs, but it was different to have an intention of kind of nothingness. And when I laid hands on this woman, I used to work with my eyes closed. So I had my eyes closed. I immediately saw beautiful orbs in her body that lined up the center of her gorgeous colors, the primary colors. And um, her body started to talk to me too. And this woman I picked in particular, she wasn't an oncology patient. She had floated up to our unit because the surgical unit was full and she should have been discharged by then. she had had a surgical procedure, but she was still in pain. So they couldn't let her go home. So I, I picked her on purpose. Don't ask me why, but she was the one that I picked maybe because I thought she's not as sick and I didn't know what I was gonna do, which is so silly. And um, her body told me why she was still in pain. She had had um, a hysterectomy. And even though she wasn't of the age to have more children, she had a lot of grief about the fact that she for sure was not gonna have any more children. And so I talked to her body through mental telepathic conferencing. And I noticed all this kind of stagnant energy leaving her physical form. And when I peeked in up in my eyes, cause I started to cry, it was so beautiful. She was crying too. Uh -huh. And um, I found out the next day she was discharged. So that's how it all happened for me. And it was also during my time in the hospital that I began to realize I was a medium and started communicating with departed loved ones. And so I've had a full-time practice since 1999 um, in energy work and mediumship and I teach and all those fun things. And, and I actually am a student in your mediumship <laughs> course. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I, I really yeah. it. Thank you. You know, that's such an interesting story. And I have to tell you, Marie, I, I knew your background and it always fascinated me that you went into Western medicine, particularly with your family's background in organic and holistic and this and that. I thought, what a curious choice to go into Western medicine. And now my personal opinion, this is me. I'm not a doctor, you guys. If I break my leg, that's exactly where I'm going. Everything else, uh-uh. Right. I'm going to the health food store and talking to the, whoever's working in the aisles. So it was so, it was really surprising to me. But then I realized you were taking energy into a system that needed that kind of energy. 
And you had all kinds of opportunity to actually touch your patients and work with their energy fields. Yeah, I, I love what you, because it is, it was per- peculiar to me, not really that I moved into modern medicine because it brought me extraordinary joy. I think humans need to stop listening to their brains and they need to start feeling their authentic emotions, which the brain will never understand. Like it doesn't make sense from a logical perspective why I would move into modern medicine, but I had incredible joy there. And when you're in joy, when you're in high frequency of joy, that's when you expand more into your magnificence. And, and I love that I know so much about modern medicine because I see very, very sick people. I've probably looked at every disease energetically that we know of on the planet. And because I'm comfortable with even having conversations that patients could have with their physicians or their radiologist or their natural path, it's really been a God sent that I'm so comfortable with it, that I think it's beautiful, that I can support people's choices because I may give different advice than what a patient may follow or a client of mine may follow. But I understand what it feels like to be, even though I haven't personally had those experiences, I know what it feels like to be in that conundrum of trying to make a decision. So I can really step out of the way and honor them, you know, as the beautiful soul they are, honor their free will, but also um, give them the information that they might need that might help them to proceed in a beneficial way if they continue to choose modern medicine. And for some people, it is the best choice for them. It truly is, right? Like what you said, if you break your leg, you want to go have it set. If we need open heart surgery, I definitely want to go to the best cardiologist at the best hospital who's going to perform that procedure for me so that I can live longer. Yeah. And that's a good point. You know, it's, I love the fact that we're really moving into energy medicine because I think that that's the future for humanity. During your practice in your work today, are you working mostly with people in energy medicine or are you working as a medium? So is, or is it 50, 50? Oh, it's a really great question. I've always given medium um, experiences in every energy medicine session I give every. So what I found out really early in my career is that people have so much grief and sorrow about their loved ones. And they just started popping in, you know, into the reading. And so that's how um, I began my very first experience was in the hospital and I saw this, you know, blob of blue, cobalt blue, which didn't surprise me because I'm very clairvoyant. So I was seeing weird stuff all the time. I still do to some degree. And I mean, that's new or different. And it turned out to be a mother of a patient who was in the hospital. And I, the son was not my patient because I was a charge nurse. So I didn't have my own, you know, list of patients. And eventually after she yelled at me all day long, to go see her son. And I didn't know what room he was in. Up there in the ceiling, huh? (laughs) Yelling at me, go see my son. I'm like, I don't know where he is and I'm busy. And I was tired. I had three young kids. I was getting a divorce. You know, I was worn out. But finally she yelled at me in the perfect moment at the end of my shift. And of course I should have known she was floating right by his room. Um, And then his, his door glowed. And when I went into the room and it was so such a blessing to go, I'm a charge nurse, but I want to lay hands on you. Is your mother dead? Because I think she's been yelling at me all day long, which turned out to be true. (laughs) She was dead and they said she was a yeller. And when I laid hands on him, she had the most beautiful message for him. She wanted him to know that he wasn't dying in this moment. He had pancreatic cancer. So he was, you know, terminal as most pancreatic patients are. And um, she wanted him to know he was going to go home and he still had time. And, And I was just so grateful that she was able to communicate that to him through me so that he could rest and enjoy whatever time he had left on the planet and then hang out with her when he leaves, you know, yeah. to be with her. So clearly she's going to be waiting for him. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and this Jesus. is a long time ago. So I'm sure, you know, this was very early in my career. So I'm sure that they are on the other side together enjoying each other still. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you know, the journey that humanity is on right now in consciousness, because this is fascinating to me. And it ties in particularly with your energy work and your health work in that, you know, we are an energy system. And once we really step into that, we're going to see such a dramatic shift in who we are and how our bodies function and how we relate to each other. 
So we're, you know, the, the word on the street, the spiritual street right now is that we're moving from 3D to 5D. And it's like, we're kind of in 4D right now. And this all started because Gaia, who is a living being that we're, we're all sitting on, decided that she wanted to shift up. So let's talk about that shift up from Gaia, why she made that decision and what's going to happen or what do we think is going to happen with humanity as we all transcend into a higher vibration? Such a great question. And I'm glad you clarified what Gaia means because I honestly didn't know. Um, I love earth. I think, I think of it as a female energy, but obviously she's going to be every energy because she, you know, has every kind of being living upon her. Um, you're right. She, her vibration is the highest it's ever been in any form of documented times. And that's why we can be spiritual while we're sitting on a toilet. Like we don't have to go live in an ashram somewhere. <laughs> Although it would be fun, you know, to go live in Nepal or Tibet or some beautiful place, but it's not very realistic for most of us to just pack up and go live somewhere where nobody could ever find us again so yeah the vibration on earth is incredibly high but i think it's a joint venture you know i really believe that like attracts like so the earth cannot be more conscious than the beings who live upon her so she's just as conscious as the most conscious energies and beings that surround and live upon earth and then she's also as conscious as some of the lower vibrational consciousness on the planet as well i think it's a joint effort that we're all working together um, but she is extraordinarily happy. And I'm not sure why she's so, I'm grateful, grateful, grateful she's so happy because it's waking us up. It's helping humanity to become more aware. Um, I think it will be a slow process, but I actually didn't even think we would be where we are today in our awakening. I, I think something interesting is happening. I, I think older souls, which you are an older soul, I'm sure you already know that. Um, older souls have been historically too nice, too kind, to forgiving, to understanding, uh, and, and not that they, those attributes need to go away. Like this is just part of who they are. It's part of their energy to be highly compassionate. But older souls are now going, well, wait a minute, that's not okay. And this is not all right. So older souls are starting to set boundaries. We've always lived in a, on a planet that's had younger and older souls probably 50-50 in the population. And then there's kind of an, a medium overlap as well, where we have some medium souls as well. And, and I think what's happened is that older souls weren't asking the right questions, they weren't setting boundaries, they were just like, oh, well, they didn't really mean that, or, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's not what's really happening. Like older souls were just way too nice. And I think what's happened is older souls are now not doing that. And so it's being very clear what younger souls think and what they want and what they want to experience in life where before they didn't they didn't even have to really say what they truly felt or what they truly believed in because older souls would say well that's not true i'm sure you don't believe in that you didn't really mean that so there's a shift in consciousness where older souls the reason why they come to earth is to learn self-compassion self-appreciation and, and so they're starting to gain self-worth and confidence and so they're starting to look at everything from more of a realistic per perception so it may feel like things are very different but i don't believe they really are in terms of you know what old souls believe and what young souls believe i just think it's obvious now it's very clear that, that we have younger souls and older souls on the planet, which is very normal. And that's the way it's going to be forever. You and I were young souls. There's nothing wrong with being a young soul, but they're going to have different perceptions, different belief systems, different ways to handle life, different ways that they um, choose to vibrate their energy on the planet. So I think that the older souls now not thinking that selfishness and narcissism type energy is normal or healthy or just a mistake or people don't really mean it i think that's what's changing i think it's the older soul vibration is shifting so significantly because they are starting to realize that the definition of ego is incorrect that people are supposed to love themselves deeply and tenderly and realize that they're magnificent um all souls are actually supposed to feel that way. And in doing so, they're starting to clean up the world a little bit. And of course, whenever you clean something up, there's a lot of dust and debris and 
things have to change in order for a, 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 even a room to move to a place of true alignment. You know, I love all of that. And it brings up so many questions. The first one is, and when we're talking about earth, let's, let's dive into this first. Earth is a place of contrast, duality. We have the dark and the light. In other reality systems, it's not this, oh, in your face. It's not so apparent. It's not so obvious. They don't have the wide range of dark and light, evil and goodness, love and hate, blah, 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 blah. The reason souls come to earth, and this is my understanding, Marie, is that it's such a, it's such an important school. You learn so quickly and you learn the lesson so well because of that contrast. Okay, so I kind of look at school or at earth as this boot camp. You know, you come into boot camp, it's tough, it's rough, there's people that are mean to you all day long, but you come out a changed person. So you come out, you come out of earth a changed soul. So this is what earth is. It's this really tough, gritty school. It's very physical, it's filled with sensations, filled with heartache, filled with happiness, the whole spectrum. Now, if earth cycles up to a 5D, we're not going to have that same duality. Right. There's not going to be that same dark and light. There's not going to be the good guys and the bad guys. It's going to be a little more subtle. So where are we going to go to get those boot camp experiences? Or are there other reality systems? Are we don't need it as a, as a collective anymore? What, what are your thoughts on this? Love these questions. I love your perception. I think of Earth as PhD school. You know, mm -hmm. and, and so when you're in a non-physical reality, as you so eloquently described, you don't need food, money, you don't have a body. So there isn't a lot, let's say your soul is telling you, we need to work on self-empowerment. Oh, we need to work on self-forgiveness because I'm talking about old souls right now where younger souls are learning compassion, older souls are learning self-compassion. And, and so when we've been in these other dimensions or realities and we don't feel inspired to do the inner work, because we're having so much fun. We're just relaxing. And it's easy and it's sweet and it feels yummy and delicious and the energy is fabulous. <laughs> Agreed. And so then we make a decision because we have free will. You know, I think I'm going to reincarnate to earth. I'm going to go back again, uh, which takes us about four years, even though time does not exist. But it's about a four year process where you're planning, you know, your gender, what century you want to come into because there really is no time so you can even come into the future you can go into the past you can come whenever you want to to a planet like earth and there are a few other realities like earth but there's not that many you are correct and so we know there's going to be contrast and we know what we want to work on we take parts of our soul that can help us parts of our soul that need healing and parts that want to have fun and pleasure and all of that deliciousness on this beautiful gorgeous planet uh, so i love your question that's why i think we're so far away from the 5d aspect but i didn't think that we'd be here especially when we talk about energy medicine mediumship has been really popular on the planet for quite a while and which is lovely but most people weren't caring about their energy or their own vibration and it's not just about health it's about consciousness it's about so you can see your uncle harry when they've crossed over and still continue a relationship with them not just because you go see you went and saw a medium which is lovely but because you can do it yourself or if you want to manifest something in your life you have to be aware of your energy you have to be aware of when you're in a pattern or when you're in low vibrational consciousness so I love that we're here in this place. And honestly, I didn't think we would be here in my lifetime. Really? I, yeah. And I've just been so lucky with work. I've always had more clients that I could ever take care of. So I've never, and I've been so busy. I've just been in my own busy world, but I really didn't think it was going to happen in my lifetime. So I'm thrilled and excited and grateful that people are learning about themselves and understanding their woundology and learning to work with it you know and heal themselves because people heal themselves even when they go see a healer we provide right opportunities and we facilitate that but they do it themselves you know which is so delicious so i don't know what will happen when i just i think what you said is accurate we probably won't need that much contrast yeah that's what i think will happen yeah and I've noticed in my own life, you know, for me personally, my telepathy is so much more acute than it was. 
And I see it with friends that just know things or they just get it or they understand or they perceive something before it happens. I mean, we're all shifting, which is fun, which is fun because I can only imagine we're, we're going to be 30 years from now or that sort of thing. Okay. I have an interesting question that someone posed to me in a comment of one of my videos. And I thought, you know what? That's, that is an interesting question. So we have this planet of duality. And we come in and we experience challenges and heartache and pain and abuse and this sort of things. And it things that we have chosen in our life path in order to learn the lessons we want to learn. Now, if we're experiencing these darker, heavier emotions, there's generally someone on the other end dishing it out. <laughs> so the question that the viewer had was, these people, let's, let's call them the naughty boys. You know, like there's naughty boys trying to run our planet. There's naughty boys running corporations that maybe don't have the best interest of humanity in mind. We'll call them the naughty boys. Where are their spirit guides? Or is the whole <laughs> setup, it's like if you're going to come in and be a naughty boy, that's kind of a big deal. That's a, <laughs> that's a big choice because you're really putting yourself in the line of fire and choosing to create circumstances that are going to create pain or struggle, but then that soul has signed up for it. It's very confusing. And are there spirit guides saying, oh, be naughtier? <laughs> so instead of our spirit guides saying, be more compassionate, be loving. Are they saying, you know, you know, double down? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great question. So naughty boys, if you will, I like the term naughty. I think it's adorable. I have five grandchildren. So, you know, I'm just look, thinking of all of them right now when they come to my house and they make forts in my pantry and in closets. Oh, I and love that stuff. It's, it's adorable, but then they leave. I'm like, um, <laughs> you know, this is a mess. You know, please come help me clean up. So um, the naughty people, whether they're male or female or however they decide their gender, our younger souls. So let's just talk about the definition of a younger soul. So I've already said you're an old soul, I'm an old soul. Old souls have had hundreds of thousands of lifetimes, hundreds of thousands. They've been around for an extremely long period of time. And what, what happens when a soul emerges, I think of creation or God, the universe as this big ball of fire energy. And when creation or God or the universe, I'm just using all those words because people like different words. I like the G word personally, but not everybody likes that word. Um, when the universe gets inspired, it births a new version of itself, you know, because we're all really God. We're all part of creation. We're all one. That's just the reality of it. So another ball of fire emerges from the bigger ball of fire, and that's a soul. It's birthed a soul with unique tendencies and individualization. So you and I were birthed, you know, many, many hundreds of thousands of years ago. Younger souls may have only had a thousand lifetimes on earth or a thousand lifetimes in total because we don't always reincarnate to a physical reality like earth we spend lots of time in non-physical realities and we don't even have to reincarnate we can stay in the heaven for earth if we want to forever you know, we can do whatever we want we have free will so they're, they're younger souls but there is this so they don't know they haven't learned compassion yet they don't have empathy their heart chakras are smaller so older souls their heart chakra fills their entire chest cavity and makes them highly empathetic this is how they can feel others and understand what someone's going through and provide compassion younger souls have much smaller heart chakras so they haven't learned how to have that compassionate aspect but the reason why an old soul, because you're describing this person who wrote into is also an older soul. What you're describing is this really interesting wound that exists where older souls haven't learned self-compassion and they overgive and they over nurture everyone and they make excuses for other people's behavior and they haven't learned to really value themselves. And that's a wound, by the way, that's a wound. And to help them to learn selfishness and I mean, it will be in a healthy way, selfishness. They come into contact with a younger soul who has more narcissistic type behaviors. So, so there's this almost like a magnet that brings them together because the older soul needs to learn selfishness and the younger soul needs to learn selflessness. And so they come together in this magnet and there's just like this immediate attraction and 
And then after a while, it's clear this is a problem. This is not healthy. This is not good. And it's usually the older soul who kind of wakes up to the situation because the younger soul that has that particular behavior, so not all, not all young souls do, um, they love it when something someone over cares for them and over nurtures them and takes care of them and helps them to grow. But they're, they're not ready to have that growth. They're thousands and thousands and thousands of lifetimes away from being compatible really with an old soul. So older souls need to learn to make friends with personal relationships, intimacy, business partners with other older souls. They can't really have healthy relationships with young souls. They can have superficial relationships with younger souls, but they can't have healthy relationships because they're just light years away from each other in terms of understanding. And you know, the older soul will always be loving and kind to everyone. It's just the way they are. But the younger soul will never understand the older soul. It just won't happen. It just won't happen. You know, that's such an interesting take on it. And, you know, I'll see this in my personal life where I'll be talking to a, a friend and explaining something that's going on that's not good. You know, it's it's something that we wouldn't choose to have on this planet, those of us who want a peaceful, loving planet. And they can't conceptualize of it because they would never do it. That's so they so they. True. They can't, they can't embrace it or understand it because they would never, it would hurt their heart. Well, and that's what I was talking about at the beginning where I think older souls are waking up. So they're waking up going, oh, people actually do these things. Yeah. Oh, this person's actions are what I need to pay attention to, not their words, right? Like, so older souls are walk, waking up, which is have, having they're asking the harder questions and younger souls are now saying, well, yeah, I don't believe in this. I believe in that. I would never do this. And the older souls are like, wow. Okay. Weird. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's been a lot more in the last, uh, you know, let's say eight years, there's been a lot more people and families are having arguments, you know, about policies in the world and how women should be treated and how, culture should be treated where before there it, it was never discussed that people just assumed that others had the same viewpoint like as how you're talking about your friend who just can't imagine that someone would be unkind or disrespectful on purpose and consciously but there are people who are actually really like that and again we don't want to say there's something wrong with young souls they're actually just operating where they need to be um, so that they can learn compassion. That's why we have so many challenges on earth, like wars and famine, because most younger souls begin to learn compassion through tragedies, through witnessing horrific events, where older souls don't need to have those experiences because they've already had them. They've already had them. And that's why it touches them so deeply and it shocks them that we still have war on this planet or there's people that don't have food. It, it shocks us. And older souls actually even have remedies on how we could heal all these events around the world. But remember, we live with younger soul beings who aren't going to allow those things to happen. Or even when we drop off food for certain you know, nations around the world, there's like an army of black market people that come and take the rice. And so what we need is happening. We need the vibration of earth to rise. And so that means older souls need to stay in their own lane, need to believe what people tell them and not make excuses for people's behavior <laughs> and, and ask to be surrounded by people who are like-minded as them so they can keep raising their vibration because that's going to help the whole planet. That will help the younger souls to not have to have drastic experiences to learn compassion. You know, that we don't have to have so much war in our world, which is usually started by younger souls, you know, younger yeah. souls start wars, right? And, you know, I, I look at it as the journey of maturity and sovereignty. In other words, I see often, particularly in countries where the choice that an individual civil uh, individual person in that country would be very different than what the government chooses as a response. For instance, you know, talking about, you know, dropping care packages off to, to places that need it. If I went next door and talked to my neighbor, she would, and I'd say, oh, there, there's this child who's starving and needs medical care. What should we do? And she would like be entering out her pantry and getting everything ready to take it, the child to the hospital. And this is that. That's what the choice people would make. 
which is very different than the choice that governments make. Okay. And I'm wondering if if there's there's a disconnect between what I want to see on the planet and what seems to unfold on the planet. That means we need to vote in progressive older souls. So we have a lot of leaders throughout the world that are younger souls. And, and all you have to do is look at the country and see what's happening to find out if a leader is a young soul or an old soul. Um, so, so that's our problem. Uh, unfortunately. Um, but I think, again, we're waking up, we're really yeah. waking up. And we're going to start to make different changes. Probably in the next decade, we're going to notice a lot of different leaders throughout the world that are more progressive that think like you do, who want to make sure that everyone is safe and healthy and has health care and food and education, like even in the United States, education should be free. Um, you know, at least junior college should it be free. And I mean, when I went to college, my children's father and myself, we both had student loans, but they, the interest rate was so incredibly low that we could afford to pay back our loans, you know, in a timely manner and also benefit from our education. We don't even have that anymore. Um, so that's a progressive, you know, perception where we start to allocate our monies differently, not to create more weapons of distraction, to create more nuclear bombs, you know, because that takes a lot of money. I think we have enough on the planet for everyone to have all the. Yeah, we've money. got plenty. We don't need. Right. Uh, so just educating, allowing people to be if who wants to go to school, who desires to have an education, just allowing that to happen in the world could be highly significant. Because one of the things happens when people seek higher forms of education, they meet all kinds of people from around the world. Yeah. They may even travel around the world, which helps us to soften our hearts to learn new cultures and new languages and new religions. And we realize that we're really all the same. We all want the same thing. We all just want to be happy and fulfilled and safe and um, to love one another. That's what we all want. It is. You know, and let's bring it back to the transition of the human. And I heard, you know, I heard this saying the other day, Marie, and you'll, we've all heard it love yourself first, love yourself. And it's almost like, you know, love yourself first. Well, I got to do the dishes and I got to do it. You know, we got all this whole life. But when I, I, all of a sudden one day it hit me in a different way, because if we all loved ourselves first, truly loved and appreciated and respected ourselves, who do we become? We become a very gentle, loving, compassionate, fair fun person to be around. And it shifts the whole dynamic of the planet. So if every person really did that work to love themselves deeply and completely, everything shifts. I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I had the same response because I've been reading self-help books since like the 80s, right? <laughs> yeah. And so self-love is in every self-help book. And I remember my guide said something to me. I had a, a little bit of a health issue in my 30s. And I go, well, you really need to love yourself more. I'm like, oh. Um, and what I've what <laughs> Not I've said, that again. <laughs> yeah. What I've since learned is that self-love is an experience. It's not a thought. It's actually an experience, just like when you love your dog or a child or a partner or a country or a language, you know, um, a glacier meadow with wildflowers. Whenever you have that huge, expansive feeling of love, you're supposed to direct that towards yourself so that you can calibrate that energy inside your own physical form so you can get comfortable with the vibration of self-love. It's just as delicious as loving another creature. Um, right now, all the frogs are so loud in my neighborhood and I love frogs and it's day and night because they're all mating, right? It's spring and they're all- It's, ha it's happy time. It's happy time. <laughs> and I love the sound of frogs. I love it. So I'm opening up all my windows and you know, I walk my dog all the time throughout the neighborhood. And I'm just standing there, closing my eyes, listening to all the beautiful sounds they're making. And then I remember to love myself as much as I'm loving the frogs in that moment. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Right? So you just redirect that energy back to yourself. And I think you're so spot on. I think you have lovely guides, by the way. They're, they're, you really do. They're, they're very helpful and very inspiring. You have very high vibrational spirit guides, which means you're a very high vibrational person. And I love that you're stepping into that, 
that beautiful alliance that you have. But you're absolutely right. As we move into that, and mostly older souls are the ones in that place of learning self-love. And I hate to be putting everything on the older souls, like we've got to get our act together. We have to continue to say no, we have to fall in love with ourselves. But as we do, because older souls have this beautiful violet flame inside of them. That's why they're often called light workers. And when they're happy, when they're fulfilled, which is a choice, by the way, happiness is a choice. We can either look out the window and say it's too hot, or we can look out there and say, oh my gosh, look at the beautiful blossoms. You know, we. We have a choice and when we are in our authentic joy our flame brightens it's like this beautiful lavender flame and then our energy starts to expand naturally old souls shouldn't be giving their energy away out of worry or fear or anxiety that's not a high frequency energy but if they can be in their own joy they're going to illuminate the world in very high vibration which could start to get other beings in different um, variations of soul age to start to grow in their beautiful aspect of compassion quickly. Yeah. Oh, that sounds lovely. You know, with your energy work, because you're so visual, are you actually seeing a shift in the energy bodies or changes in the auras or however you see it? Are you seeing a almost an advancement or a shift? I'm definitely seeing an advancement. And I, I thought perhaps it was just who I attract, you know, because I yeah. tend to attract high vibrational people, not people that I have to explain what energy medicine is. I usually don't have to explain what a chakra is. I don't have to explain what mediumship is. It's not something that I have to explain. But I would say overall, yeah, I feel like I really need to continue, which we have to any my own inner work because my clients are rapidly growing and rapidly changing, which is really nice because that means they heal faster. They figure out how to communicate with their loved ones. They come to peace at a faster frequency and vibration. I've always felt that I don't need to see clients very often for whatever reason I see someone because I do mediumship appointments too separately. I always feel like people just need one session with me and we're done, but not all my clients believe that. <laughs> and, you know, so we have certain parameters about, you know, who can get on the schedule because we book out so far. But yes, I would say the vibration is quickening and people are understanding things, even if their logical mind isn't getting it, which is actually good. People need to ignore their logical mind, their bodies having huge shifts of consciousness and they're healing faster and they're, letting go of grief at a, a higher rate. They're coming to peace about something that we probably need to teach classes about death and dying, at least in the United States, because people really don't understand it at all and don't understand that this is a temporary reality and that chronological age is not a determination about when someone's gonna leave the planet. It's about their soul's personal growth and awareness and when they wanna leave. You know, that is such a good point. And I have thought for a while, Marie, that we really should, have classes on what to do when you transition because it's going to happen to everybody and you have choices and if we're comfortable with it we're going to do it so much better i yeah that too i really that's very wise of you i really haven't thought about like the patient or the person who's dying but the family members they seem so confused they don't understand it they don't get it they're just not prepared you know for this thing that even glaciers leave the planet at some point, right? Like uh, this is a temporary reality, but yes, I, th I think you're right because what we want um, as a culture of beings, of souls, is we want to die more consciously. We want to be more yeah. aware of the experience. We, we want to kind of enjoy it. Yeah. And I know that sounds weird, but that's what we really want. And it's, it's, an, it's another adventure, off to another adventure. And in our culture, the U.S., I think in indigenous cultures it's probably a little healthier i mean there's it's such a fear thing like an oh no and oh this is going to happen well you know what you're just on to the next journey it's a transition it's easy and so we look at it in a way that i don't think is healthy because it's scaring people all the time and it doesn't need to be that way i agree with you indigenous people respected when a tribal member wanted to leave the planet even if they weren't ill and they would decide that they're going to go out in the winter and pass away of hypothermia and everyone in the tribe would gather and say goodbye and love that person and maybe they would have a signal if they changed their minds so they could go find them <laughs> but then that person was 
you know, granted that permission so that they can go out into the wilderness. And I don't think anyone on earth dies when they're not supposed to. I think, yeah, I don't souls, either. Right. They're so powerful. They're so knowledgeable when they want to go. That's when they go. So there's never a mistake. There's never a real accident. I always think that every form of death is a form of suicide, actually. Right. And because and suicide in terms of the soul is making that decision to go at that time in that way. However, they decide to transition to another reality. Yeah. I tell my daughter, just push me off on an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. I love it. Well, the last thing I want to do is, you know, hang around a hospital with tubes and that sort of thing. That's not my, <laughs> that's not my idea of a good time. Where do you think, because we're shifting and changing and humanity is changing and we're all, you know, I even see people that don't really get into the whole spirituality thing, having perceptions and, and understandings that are outside of, you know, the reducer that is our brain. When we take the brain out of it, we start perceiving broader we get so much more information and we get it so quickly. Where do you think humans are going if this transition continues on? Are we going to be able to heal much quicker due to energy medicine and other technology? Are we going to be able to use our will more powerfully than we have today, than we, than we are today? Where do you see this, I don't know, in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years? Right. I agree with you 100%. All of those things are going to happen. And what I think we're learning to do, and you're right, people don't have to actually study spirituality to be spiritual. It's not necessary. They don't have to know the language. You know, it's it's really, again, about be, having integrity, right? And, and love and appreciation. And, and understanding the planet. I mean, I've met farmers that don't even know what a medium is that are more spiritual than a lot of people at the crystal shop. So true. That's adorable. That is adorable. What I think is, is happening, and, and this is really our problem on earth, is that humanity is stuck in their brain and they overthink and analyze everything. And we've been trained to do that. We also believe that our emotions come from our brain, but they do not. People create mind-made emotions all day long that leads to anxiety and stress and fear. Um, and all kinds of problems when humans need to ignore their brain unless they're actually doing a logical task. And then, of course, that's what the brain's for. It's a logical tool. It cannot feel. So the more people start to rest in the lower half of their body, start to actually feel authentic emotions are in the second layer of the auric field, right outside of the body. It's called the emotional response system. And so humans uh, tend to spend their time in their heart chakras and their brain. The heart chakra is supposed to be neutral. I mean, if, if creation loves everything, you have to be neutral. You can't be overly empathetic. You have to be relaxed in it. And you know, your compassion needs to be equal to all things. And then the third eye is not really where intuition originates from, but it's projected. It's like a television screen where it projects images or audio uh, messages or feelings that are intuitive, but you have to be in your emotional response system in your real emotion. So I think humanity will make very different choices if they start to feel their authentic feelings versus yeah. mind made emotions or over empathetic, like your friend that you were discussing who can't believe that someone would be that way. If she would get out of her head and get into her emotions, she could feel how that person is or feel how that person makes her feel. And then that would grant her many, many different choices and different decisions. Boy, that is such a good point, how someone makes them feel. Now, I had this thought, Marie, and I want, to, I want to get your opinion on it or your thoughts on it. You know, I was frustrated the other day thinking about what I see as a segment of the population on the planet that are, is really into control. And what I was really focusing on or what was irritating me was the lack of honesty, the constant lying, 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 lying. And I was hungry, just I'm loving the truth these days. And when I hear the truth, it just feels so good. And oh, it just, it's a comfortable feeling. And, it, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's so satisfying to hear the truth. But then the next thing that I realized is, if we're looking at a you know a certain segment of the of the population on the planet that wants to control and is being dishonest, all of a sudden you realized we're being dishonest back. 
we're not being any more honest in that we're doing things that we don't really want to do in order to get an outcome that we've been told that we should desire. For instance, working in a job that we hate to get enough money to buy a house that we don't need or a new car that's, you know, we're being, there's, you can't have, you know, you have to have two hands clapping to have the experience. So in a way, those of us who are perceiving their lies are being just as dishonest in our response to it as they are. What are your thoughts on that? I, I love everything you just said. The throat chakra is the most powerful vortex in the physical body, and it's all about speaking one's truth. And the most prescribed medication in the United States is thyroid medication. So oh. most people do not speak your truth. And yes, uh, probably 80% of the population in the United States works in a company or owns a company that they do not like they don't believe in and they don't know how to maintain the truth they live in fear because they're in their brain analyzing and processing because people can create wealth and financial freedom by doing things that they love they don't recognize that because that's not what they've been told and they listen to their fear dominated ego brain um because fear and ego are the same thing for me. And so that's one of the things, you know, that I teach all my clients and all my students is to, you know, start to take some risks, at least start to figure out what makes you happy versus telling yourself, well, I have to work in this job for the next 30 years until all the kids graduate from college or what, you know, they'll even say healthcare, like it's all logical reasons, but you can make enough money by doing stuff that you love and pay for your own healthcare. You know, there's all kinds of ways to do it. So that's what we're breaking. We're breaking these things our brain tells us we have to do so that we can be in alignment with the most powerful chakra in the physical body, which is expressing our truth. Even if people just say, I don't like my job, that, that would be nice, but they go, yeah, it's fine. It pays the bills, which is not their full truth. It might be a partial truth, but they actually don't like it. They, they truly don't like it. And yet everyone is naturally gifted. Everyone is talented. Everyone has something that will sing to their heart that they could do in the world that would bring them great fulfillment and joy and be helpful and beneficial for the planet. And I think people just have to stay in their alignment. An example I often use is like probably most of my neighbors and I live in kind of a big neighborhood, not as big as where you live. <laughs> you live in a really big neighborhood. Most of them use regular pesticides, you know, for their lawns, right? And of course, I was raised organically, so I could never put a pesticide on my yard. But I also have had to learn to not get annoyed and frustrated that my neighbors and our lawns are equally green. Um, I just might have a few more weeds in my yard than they do, uh, which my gardener hand removes. Thank you very much. I'm so grateful that he does. But I use natural products. So so you have to stay in your own alignment you have to consistently be in your own belief system and awareness not to the point where you're annoyed like oh because we have wetlands near us all of that you know stuff is heading into the wetlands i mean you that's true but you you're going to lower your vibration if you get annoyed and frustrated by it our job is to simply stay in the vibration of our own truth whatever that might be and, and to keep that vibration, to um, bless the world, because the earth is learning too. She is a soul, probably a few souls actually, that is supporting all of us. She's learning how to maintain her vibration when one of her rivers drives up, or even to get curious, like, huh, I wonder how that happened, right? Like she's learning too. So if you can stay consistent, say what you really mean, which means you have to get out of your head and rest in the lower half of your body and find out what you're really feeling, and then stay in alignment with those feelings. I remember once I did buy a bottle of Roundup because I was so annoyed with all the weeds after my kids went to college because they used to weed for me, you know, <laughs> and they were gone. You know, and one of mine's an agronomist, so she would come home and go, Mom, where, what do you want me to weed? You know, because she studied agriculture. I'm like, oh gosh, over there, honey, just take care of that. I still have the bottle because I need to dispose of it appropriately, but I've never opened it. You know, I never opened it because I'm. I live as much as I can in the alignment of my own truth. And that's what we need to work on. We need to stop bending and stop pretending and ignore our feelings and stay in alignment to our vibration, whatever that is. And most people don't even know what their vibration is and what their truth is. They're very far away from maybe closer than I originally thought would, would be on the planet. 
at this time. Um, but they need to investigate that. Well, what do I really feel about this? And what do I really believe about this? And how can I remain in alignment about it? Because that's how you manifest. That's how you create. That's how you make change. Yeah. You know, that is such a good point. And I'll share with you a little observation. And I live in a large community with mostly older folks. You know, not all of them are retired. A lot of them are retired. And one thing I've noticed Marie, is there are a lot and, and just a culture of kindness in my community. I have nothing but nice things to say. However, I have noticed that there are people who are now, they have their time. Their days are for themselves. They don't know what they like to do. They don't know. They wake up and it's like, well, what do I like? I don't know. And I see it as a lifetime spent not living in their truth, like doing a job that they really didn't care about just to get that retirement, just to, and then they wake up and it's like, I don't know what I want to do. How can you, how can people start getting back in touch? You know, little baby steps to really understanding that huge push that your guides are pushing you every day, your oversoul's pushing you every day to go in that direction because that's your passion. That's a great question. Uh, you have to investigate it. You have what I ask people to do is take a weekend and go about your day and ask yourself, did that make me happy? 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 So you can start to make a list of what brings you joy. When before I got divorced, I asked myself, what kind of music do I want to listen to? Because I always listen to whatever. It, who I was married to, what they listened to. And I was happy for a long time about it. Oh yeah, I love this music. And one day I went, I don't think I like this music at all. So I actually went to a Seattle music festival where they had bands all weekend playing different kinds of music. And I would grab some food and I would go stand in front of a stage for like 20 minutes. I would go stand. I did it all day, Saturday, all day, Sunday. And I went, oh yeah, I love jazz. I, I knew I liked R and B, but I love jazz. That's that's a reality. So now when I get in my car or I want to listen to music, I know what to ask for jazz or R and B. So you have to investigate it. Do you love to ski or do you prefer the beach? Um, do you like to go to big parties? Do you like to have small intimate ones? What is your actual real favorite color? Not what your mind tells you, Like my mind tells me that the color purple is not a great color. It might like my mind doesn't like it, but my emotional body thinks purple is incredibly cool. So just know that you're always going to have these two different aspects too. That's why it's so incredibly important to get into the emotional response system, to get into the lower half of your body, hang out on your feet, feel your glute muscles, feel your clothes on your lower extremities. Don't just stay in your head, venture your energy. Like this is your energy. It will go where you ask it to go, but you have to ask it to go somewhere. You could wake up in the morning and just say, Thank you so much for helping me to determine what brings me joy today. And, and those are the yellow brick roads of where you could meet the love of your life, you know, or where you really want a vacation. I went to Ireland last year. I'd always wanted to go. I didn't know why. And when I got off the plane, I was like, why did I want to go here? And no offense to where I landed. It just was kind of, it was really cold and damp and it was a little gritty, and it wasn't until I got to where I really wanted to go on the island that I went, oh, this is exactly what I want. And I loved it. Every, you know, every moment once I got to get a little bit away from the airport, I just loved every second of it. So if we continue to listen to our mind, we're not going to follow our bliss. We're not going to find our joy. We're going to miss our true passions, our true natural gifts. We're going to miss the pe perfect people who are meant to be in our lives as our, our healers, our friends, our lovers you know, our real family, which sometimes people are born to a family of similar vibrational soul content, and then they can have successful relationships. And sometimes we need to have friends that are more of our family because we're at two different odds of vibrational influence in order to have successful relationships. So you have to ask and the universe will help everyone, but people don't ask and, or they don't ask the right question. They say, I'm miserable. What can I do? No, you have to say, Please express to me whatever's in my highest good in this moment. How can I discover my bliss? How can I be authentically fulfilled? And then let go of the question and just go about your day and you will be guided exponentially. Yeah. And once you start asking, the, the answers just start pouring in. They really do. And it's so much fun to feel your alignment. I love the, I was, I say hi yourself, but I love over soul. That's a great 
use of language. You know, it's there always our oversoul is connected to us, our guides are connected to us, creation is connected to us. We're not separate. And when you start to feel your energy, you start to feel that connection, and then you can respond in kind to what the world is showing you so that you can move in the direction of true solid fulfillment and self-love and appreciation and experience even more joy than you possibly could have imagined. Yeah. And we're on our way there. I'm so excited. I think you're right. Honestly, I, I wouldn't have said this even three years ago, but yeah. I think you're right. I think that people are starting to feel their energy, which makes sense because the vibration has increased so much. It's hard to miss. Yeah. Right. And it's, I think it's one of those things slowly, 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 then all at once. Yeah. That, that makes total sense. One of the things I did right before I realized I was psychic, because I had no idea, you know, none whatsoever. And I was working in a hospital. I had no idea I was psychic. I had had a few psychic impressions over the years, but then years would go by and, and I didn't really work at it or anything, but I, I started a, a vibrational manifestation group in my home and we would spend 45 minutes, I think once a week just raising our vibration. And, and when you raise your vibration, you can see more, you can hear more, you can feel more, you have a better understanding of things. And I think that's what helped propel me to have the experiences I ultimately had in the hospital that led me to the career that has truly brought me enormous joy and allowed me to touch many, many more people than I would have if I continued working as a registered nurse. So people could start that in their homes you know, join it. I have one, we meet once a month. Um, you know, we trade homes. We probably should meet more. I'll have to talk to them about that, but just to be with a group of people where you can raise your frequency and your vibration elevates your consciousness so much and quickens, you know, your ability to expand and become multisensory. Cause that's, what's going to happen when humanity raises their vibration, they start to become mediums. They become healers. They become aware because when we're aware of our energy, then you are aware of how you can make energy shift and change. And you understand it, you accept it into your life and you have incredible experiences. Have you had, I'm sure you have, but you know, when you kind of work in the multi-sensory world, you don't always think that you're going to have those same cool experiences with your departed loved ones. Cause I've talked to all my family members before they've died but I've still had profound experiences where my departed loved ones show up when I'm in the shower, of course, you know, um, and they're in my bathroom and I'm so happy to see them. And then they tell me something that just like, you know, shocks me to my core and it gives me beautiful insight and awareness. And like, that's normal, right? That's a normal occurrence that we're all supposed to be having on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, what I have discovered is that I get, I've had a smorgasbord, you know, I've had an out-of-body experience. I've had a full-on vision open up right in front of me. I had an experience where someone very close to me transitioned and I felt it, yes. be you know, a day before I found out about it, you know, so I've had those all the things. I'm, it's never when I'm looking for them. <laughs> it's always when I'm just like shuffling around the house in my slippers, so I find that fascinating. And for me, meditation is the gateway drug to having spiritual experiences. I love these words that you use, the gateway drug meditation. Yeah, I'm not a big meditator, but I really believe in being present, it, which is truly what meditation is all about. I think meditation is to train your brain so you learn to be present in your life, even for just moments of a time. But the reason why you have them you know, fluffering around the house with your slippers on, which is fun, you know, to have those spontaneous things. It's really fun just because you need to sit a little bit lower when you want to have an experience, like sit in your abdominal cavity. So you'll be in your emotional response center. The fact that you can have them means you can have them all the time whenever yeah. you want. Right. And, and obviously that's where you're heading or where you are, which is delicious, but yeah, you just have to rest in that tummy area or lower back or glutes or wiggle your toes Humans love this upper portion of their body, but yet it's the foundation of our energetic system, chakras one, two, and three. And the second chakra is the gateway to the emotional response system, which is where intuition lives. Psychic ability is married in the field of energy where our emotional response system is. And so when we hang out in that lower half, we begin to have psychic experiences, which are normal and are happening yeah. all the time. And the most crazy wacky place in all the universes is places like earth 
you know, we are the lowest vibrational reality in all of the universes. And that's why when you become multisensory, you have many more positive, enlightening, fulfilling experiences in life because you're combining your human experience with your light, which is what we really are, right? Beings of light in this beautiful human body. And that's much more enriching and delightful and favorable for human beings. It makes more sense when you look at life that way. Yeah. And we come down to play in this wild experiment that is Earth. <laughs> Oh, Marie, this has been such a wonderful conversation. How do we find out more about you? Uh, you can go to energyintuitive.com. Um, I also do a podcast once a week. Uh, and I actually answer questions for people from around the world. So you can actually go to my podcast page at Energy Intuitive and leave a voicemail. I do have a lot of voicemails. I eventually get to people's questions <laughs> because I answer about 10 a week. Uh, so it's really fun. You can listen to them whenever you wish to. It's because uh, the questions help everyone. I also teach classes on the Shift Network and on my own platform. You can find all of that on my website. My my private sessions book out about three years in advance. So just keep that in mind. We have yeah. a question list. You know, if you have serious health issues or a grave loss, um, because we book out far, we do get cancellations and we fill them rapidly, um, happily. But that's just what happens in life. Sometimes you get really, yeah. really busy. Yeah. And if you're interested in expanding your intuitive abilities, you can join me as a student in her mediumship class on the shift, which yeah, is wonderful. Really fun. Thank you for taking it. I'm so happy that you do. That yeah. you do. And I know well, that you're there because you told me that when you reached out to me for this interview. And I, so when I get on there, I'm like, where's Kimberly? Where is she? <laughs> I want to be you when I grow up. I want to be a medium. Oh, when I grow up, well, so. please be, please be. I also wrote Intuitive Self Healing, um, which is a book um, published by Sounds True. You can buy it on Amazon or my website. And I also created an audiobook, How to Communicate with Your Spirit Guides. Oh, you can get I didn't on Audible. Yeah, you can get it on Audible. I think between the publisher and myself, we have like 11 CD sets left because nobody has a CD player any longer. But yeah. Yes. Well, I'll be downloading that on Audible as soon as we wrap up here. Wonderful. I hope you'll come back and see us again sometime. I would love to. Thank you so much okay. for having me. It's been a Congratulations double. on your new channel because I follow you on the microcurrent, Nira. <laughs> you know, I love things to do with facials and helping us stay naturally more youthful. I, I really love that. So thank you. You know, that's where we have our fun girl fun, you know, just being <laughs> human over there. Yeah, and here we get I to talk it. about the secrets of the universe. This has been such a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly. All right. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Bye-bye now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Coming up next, this is a good one, or you might really like this one too. Either one of them could be perfect for you. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe.